So what we're gonna talk about for a minute is using gauze to bandage and dress wounds. We've already done some videos regarding heavy arterial bleeding, severe bleeding, massive hemorrhage, and we use techniques like wound packing and we also apply tourniquets for that. What we're talking about more now is less life-threatening bleeding that you'd get to a little bit later in your assessment. So this is venous bleeding. This will be dark red blood because it does not have the oxygen in the blood coming from the heart. So this is not as life-threatening, but it still needs to be addressed. And we need to cover this up to keep any further dirt or anything from getting in that wound that could cause infection. We will talk about the difference between a dressing and a bandage. And I've got some products here that will show you, tell you a little bit about each one and the differences between them, and just give you an overview on how to properly dress these wounds. So real quick, let's talk about the difference between a bandage and a dressing. So the dressing actually goes directly on top of the wound. That's gonna be something like this four x four gauze um, or a combine pad or something that's gonna go on the wound. It will absorb some of that blood and then that is gonna help keep that wound clean so there's no further dirt or debris or anything that goes into that wound that could cause further infection. Then once we have the dressing in place, we're gonna add a bandage on top of that. That bandage could be rolled gauze, it could be pressure bandages, it could be, um, I've got some Coban or Scentsy wrap here um, to wrap around it, but it's something that's gonna wrap in place to hold that dressing where it needs to be. So remember, dressing goes on the wound and then a bandage goes around to hold that dressing in place. So if we have an injury, then we can take um, some gauze. I've got a couple stacked four by fours here. This is four by four gauze because it is four inches by four inches. I'm gonna use this as my dressing. I'm gonna dress that wound and then I will use a bandage to secure this in place. Um, if we have continual bleeding, we may need to hold pressure on this to help that bleeding uh, stop, help that clot off. So we will apply this over the bleeding. We'll hold some pressure on it. We'll allow that some time to clot off um, and we can go ahead and put that bandage in place as well. So I'm gonna address this first with some rolled gauze. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna put this right on top here. Lift his arm up just a little bit. And the, the way I like to do it is the first roll is gonna be pretty loose. It just kind of holds things in place so they don't shift. And then after that, I can put a little bit of pressure on here if needed. Remember, the goal of this is not to occlude um, any veins or arteries. So we don't want a ton of pressure, but we do want some firm pressure to help that bleeding. So I don't wanna go tight enough to start cutting off circulation. We want the circulation to be good because this is not arterial bleeding where we need to stop the circulation but we do wanna hold that in place and have a little bit of pressure to help with the clotting process. So, a couple ways we can do this um, as we terminate this now. Wrap this around. I can simply take this, I can use some tape and I can tape this in place. I can use this and I can just tuck this, which for most injuries works just fine. It'll hold it in place, uses a little bit of friction and it won't slip out. Um, another way, if I need a little bit more pressure on here, I can back this up just a little bit. I can create a knot or a little bit of a loop in here. Okay, once I have a loop, I'll wrap this around. I can come back up through this loop now and I can tension it and then tie it off. Um, a couple half hitches or something to tie this or an overhand knot, just whatever. If you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. And, make a uh, Tennessee wad knot here, tighten that down and we can secure that. That way it doesn't come unraveled and unroll on you. Um, but this is pretty well secured. We have our bandage in place over our dressing. Okay, so when we're dressing the wound, we have um, some four by fours here that is gonna be pretty common. This is pretty common for uh, hospital use, ambulance use, um, and for people to keep in first aid kits. So these four by fours are very commonly used uh, for wounds like this. Um, this is what it looks like. There's two in each pack. So I've got two of them here. If one is not enough for the amount of bleeding you have, double them up. So we can open up another pack and we can double that up and put it on there so that we have enough gauze to actually absorb the bleeding and the blood coming through as we continue to put pressure. If it just gets saturated in blood, you need to throw another one on there. Um, something to keep in mind is if it continues to bleed through, it's not always a good idea to yank these off and rip all those clots off. 
um, before we put more on there. So if it comes to be a huge mess, then you may need to swap these bandages out for some fresh ones. But if the clotting process is starting and you still have some seepage through there, then you can just add um, some additional ones on top. Now let's say we have a larger area or a lot more bleeding than just four by fours are gonna handle. We can use um, what are called some combine pads. There's also some larger one called ABD pads or abdominal pads for like abdominal trauma. But these combine pads are much thicker than those loosely woven um, four by fours. So there's actually a um, kind of an envelope here and then there's a thick pad in the middle. And so we can use this to absorb a lot more blood and it's also a larger surface area here so that it can uh, cover a larger wound. So we could put this on there and same thing, we would just use a roll of gauze to secure that in place. Something else that we can use is this Coban. So um, we can take, once we have the dressing in place, now we can bandage this with the Coban. This Coban is stretchy um, and it also sticks to itself. Uh, this is from Dynarex, it's actually called Scentsy Wrap. Um, some people call it Coban. Um, it's like a self-adhesive uh, bandage. So we can wrap it around here hold it in place. Because this is stretchy though, uh, you do have to be careful you don't put too much pressure to start uh, occluding circulation um, back to the arm. So you wanna make sure that you don't get too tight with that. So that is something you can use. Also, if you have like a severe bleeding kit and you have some pressure bandages, you can use these as a bandage. You just have to make sure that you don't end up putting it too tight. So it does have a pad here, um, so it'll help absorb a little bit more blood. We can put this in place, but I'm not using it as a real pressure bandage right now. I'm just going to wrap it loosely and really it's only um, its only job right now is to hold this in place. This is a little bit overkill though because it is a little bit more expensive and I don't need the capabilities of the pressure on this one but if it's all I have I would definitely use it. So it may not always be simply wrapping gauze around an arm to hold a dressing in place. It may be a little more complicated in how you have to hold that dressing in place with the tools and resources you have. Um, let's look specifically at the neck because there's some specific challenges when you're trying to apply this to the neck so that you don't end up occluding the airway um, or cutting off too much circulation in the neck. So if we have a neck injury, we'll apply the dressing directly on the wound. Then we will start with the gauze roll and start wrapping it. The trick here is to have the patient raise their arm above their head. We're gonna wrap underneath the armpit here and this is going to allow us to be able to wrap around the neck without occluding anything on the other side of the neck and also keeping the airway open so that the pressure is all on this side and then up under the arm. <clears throat> Here when we get to the end, we'll do a tuck or a wrap or a tie or something to secure that. Um, you can use tape as well if you want to. And then you'll have the patient bring their arm down. As we do this, it's gonna stretch this. Whoop, coming loose a little bit. Um, as we do this, it's gonna stretch this a little bit and it's gonna put additional pressure right here on this wound. So as we're trying to keep pressure on there from bleeding, we'll hold direct pressure and then we'll wrap it. But if we wrap this way, short little section, drop my arm, and now we have, it actually puts pressure and tension on there. So if you have someone laying on the ground, you can do the same thing. They're laying on the ground, put their arm up above their head, wrap it, then when you put their arm back down by their side again, then that will pull pressure on there. And we did a quick wrap for the sake of the video, but secure it a little more. So remember, a dressing goes directly on top of the wound, and then you'll hold that in place with a bandage. I hope you found this video helpful and hope it gave a little more insight into properly dressing wounds. Stay vigilant and stay safe.